before Mass, Deacon Joe and I were kidding around, and uh, he said that we could sum up this day's gospel with, trust Jesus, don't drown. I think it's a very key thing that we see, trusting in God. God sometimes allows us to see things in a different way to strengthen us. We hear in the first reading, Elijah is oppressed because, and he's depressed as well, not just oppressed, he's tired out after defending the faith and even overcoming the prophets of Baal. But he is being pressed and oppressed by Ahab and Jezebel who are seeking his life. And he goes to Horeb. It's like basically he's going on retreat. He needs to get an encounter again with the Lord. And this is what we hear. We hear that the encounter with God is not like it was with Moses was. When, when with Moses there was lightning and thunder and the lightning bolts and that kind of a thing. And it was very, very frightening. But instead, it's something different. Elisha has a raging wind happening and an earthquake and a fire, and he realizes that that's not God. God isn't in those things. He hears a still silent whisper and realizes that God is there in that whisper. Peter and the disciples see Jesus walking on the water and they're afraid. And Jesus says, come to me, calls Peter out. Peter begins to walk, and he takes his eyes off Jesus. And he begins to consider all the things, the winds and the wave, and and all the other things besides the presence of Jesus. And what happens is he begins to sink. He's putting his faith more in what's around him than who's in front of him. Brothers and sisters, Sometimes as Catholics, I know I'm, I'm one of them, we can wish that God would just appear or send an angel or maybe have Mary appear and have an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary to strengthen us, but that's not what Jesus decided to leave to us as a perpetual inheritance. Instead, he gave to us Jesus in a very humble form, in a very silent way, appearing to us in his body, blood, soul, and divinity here at this Mass. Jesus is appearing. Jesus is coming here. We are encountering Jesus today. And so we are called to keep our eyes on Jesus in the Eucharist, to be strengthened, and to cast all of our cares upon Jesus because he cares for us. So that whatever it is that is disturbing us in our thoughts or in our minds or in our memory, whatever we've been going through this past week that has been difficult, we don't want to let that kind of cloud our vision as it did for Peter when he was walking on the water and seeing the waves and the wind. Instead, we want to keep our eyes cast on Jesus. Quick little story about somebody We'll call her Karen, not her real name. But since Karen's been getting a bad rap, I'll tell a good story about Karen, okay? So Karen had heard that a man who hadn't been coming to church, but somebody else was coming for him, somebody was asking for prayers from a healing team for this man, that he was healed of stage 4 bone cancer and leukemia. And the priest was preaching... The next Sunday, telling the story about what happened during the, during the Mass, you know, that this person was healed in abstentia, and the priest was saying, we don't have to wait for a special prayer team because Jesus the healer is present at every single Mass. And Karen had a nephew, we'll call him Jim. Jim had been in a serious accident. He had a severe head trauma, and it was a miracle that he was alive. And Karen decided that since Jesus was present in the Eucharist at the Mass, that Jesus could heal her nephew who was several states away, just as people had prayed for the man who'd come and his stage 4 bone cancer and his leukemia had been healed. So... Karen came up and received communion and brought 
Jim, her nephew, with him, with her, asking Jesus, who is present in the Eucharist, that he might be healed. She got news the next day that for the first time since the accident, he sat up on his own, unassisted, was able to take steps, and even hugged his father. And when she heard that news, she was filled with joy because she knew that that was the answer to her prayer. Brothers and sisters, there are many times that we are called to trust in Jesus, but the concerns, our fears, our doubts that God even cares try to drown our faith. But we are called today to trust Jesus. As Catholics, we believe that healing takes place in this place called Lord's France, right? We've heard of this, right? where there's a miraculous stream and and there's healing that happens when people go and they bathe in the stream there. And yet, at Lourdes, France, there are more healings because of Jesus in the Eucharist. There are more documented cases of people being healed because of the Eucharist than because of the healing waters in Lourdes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not putting down the healing waters of Lourdes by any means. I love Our Lady and I love places where she's appeared. And I know that where somebody from heaven has appeared, it can change the atmosphere of a place. It can change that place so that there is a mark on that place. And that's why there are certain places like Lourdes and Fatima and certain other shrines where people experience healing, that kind of a thing. But brothers and sisters, I want to point out in our normalcy, we don't want to forget that Jesus appears to us here, not just appearing, but he makes himself present in his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And if a saint appearing in a place can mark a place and people can get healed because of that, how much more can Jesus in the Eucharist not only mark us and make us a place that's holy, but also heal us and heal others that are coming? That is, healing others that we might bring to Jesus, just as Karen did bringing her nephew Jim to the Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, we want to trust in Jesus. We don't want the world, our unbelief, especially the way things seem to be going in the world today, drown our faith that might make us say, yeah, right. But I promise this. It's not often I promise something. I promise that when we ask the Lord, as we did in the psalm, to show us his kindness and and his salvation, if we actually mean that and not just saying it because, hey, that happens to be the psalm today, but if we actually mean that and say, Lord, show me your kindness and grant me your salvation. Let me see your goodness so that I can be strengthened in my faith. The Lord will do that because he wants us to have faith just as much as we might want to have faith. And so we pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you that you sent Jesus to be the presence of your kindness and the presence of your salvation here in this world and that you grant us that presence in the Eucharist every single time we come to Mass. Father God, we ask that you might reveal to us your kindness and your goodness. Blow us away with your miracles, your signs, your wonders, that you promised your church so that we can have a renewal of our faith in a day and age that is in so desperate need of hope, so desperate need of examples of your love, and so desperate need of our witness to your goodness. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.